get right to it then. So the first question here is, what are the reasons students choose Northwestern for ED? Well, I mean, it's like a lot of other colleges. If, if you find things that particularly appeal to you about Northwestern, I think it would be a really good choice. Academically, Northwestern is, you know, generally widely considered in that kind of Ivy plus range. It's not, uh, it's not normally an Ivy, but its academics are really strong. Uh, it's got really strong programs for things like journalism. Uh, Pre-med is also pretty solid. Um, so I think it's really just up to the individual student to do their research, right? It could just be that like they're maybe closer to the Chicago area and that makes it like an appealing choice for them. Um, so it's certainly well worth um, doing your research. I would suggest visiting the school if you want to consider doing that for ED. Okay, next question is, uh, so I'm a sophomore and I got a 1560 on my first SAT without taking any prep courses. Wow, that's very impressive, congratulations. What should I do if I wanna optimize my application? Uh, in other words, did I, they're asking if they should take it again junior year or take the ACT. I think a 1560 is more than high enough. Uh, typically speaking in that range, uh, there's not much else you need to prove above and beyond that. I would say instead of spending a lot of time doing another, you know, test or taking some prep classes, just focus on, you know, um, doing the best you can in terms of things like extracurriculars, volunteering, and making sure you can maintain straight A's as best you can, right? Uh, next, does qualifying for Amy make much of a difference for an Asian male? Um, of course, it looks pretty good in terms of if you're going for a STEM major, but the degree to which um, it will help you will largely probably depend on whether or not you're able to score in the higher ranges of that as well, or whether or not you make the, uh, you know, the Team USA for that. Um, there are, you know, obviously like degrees, uh, but, you know, if you're going for STEM field, that in and of itself is probably not going to move the needle as much, just simply qualifying. Uh, you probably need to do a little bit more than that. Okay. Next, to apply for a public college, will some zero period classes, GPA, such as leadership class, be included in the total GPA application? I mean, that'll vary tremendously from school to school. Um, so for the UCs, for instance, you can check something called the UCOP website, where they have a database of every California high school, and they can see whether or not certain classes will be counted as part of the GPA when they calculate it. Um, largely, if the school just has you self-report all your grades, you, you can just assume that they'll factor it in, right? Um, so, but there's a lot of variations there in terms of, um, you know, the, the range of all the different uh, institutions out there. I think it's best for you to kind of like look more specifically. You can't make any sort of broad generalizations about public colleges in general. Uh, it'll vary tremendously. Okay, next is, do you recommend taking community college classes in the summer? Yes, it's a very viable option. Um, so that's certainly something that like our students have done in the past. Um, one of the benefits of taking community college classes, of course, is that you have a wider array of classes to pick from. Uh, I would probably normally recommend taking that over, let's just say, self-studying for an AP. Um, now, of course, if you have other options, like being able to take like UC approved courses or UC courses, taking a class at a UC would be like a little bit better in terms of making sure it transfers. For a community college, you'd have to check to see whether or not it is a UC or CSU transferable class. But it's still a very good option, right? Um, especially because if you pick classes that are related to your major, it shows a lot more advanced skill sets and uh, your passion for your major if you're able to investigate and take you know courses that are related to that field next is uh do berkeley ucla and usc require sat or act scores um just want to make sure everybody's aware of this the uc system is test blind which means they do not even look at the sat or act even if you chose to submit it usc is test optional so you can choose to submit your sat or act if you wish uh, or you can choose not to in which they evaluate you minus the standardized test scores. Uh, many colleges are sort of in that same similar situation these days, okay? But for the UCs and Cal States and uh, for Caltech, I believe as well, uh, they're test blind, so they don't even take a look at those scores even if you submitted it. Okay, next is my, my child was a straight A student but suffered depression in 11th grade and had to quit school. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, to receive treatment for half a year. He's now repeating 11th grade. How will this affect the college application and what universities are still possible? Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell exactly what universities are still possible um, because like some schools will have a policy where they'll average out the grades. 
uh, if you are repeating a grade and there's duplication of the courses, you may just want to check with some institutions that he is applying to and see whether or not that's going to necessarily impact your admissibility, your chances to get into the school. Uh, it's very difficult to assess that just, you know, from this vantage point, um, just because obviously like a lot will depend on how his grades are gonna be in 11th grade. I would venture to assume that they'd also really wanna see his first semester 12th grade uh, to make sure that like, you know, the grades have stabilized a bit. Um, but I think there are going to be some schools that are just willing to give a student a chance, you know, given, you know, the situation and everything, as long as the grades have rebounded. But if the grades are still kind of rocky in 11th grade and 12th grade, that might really drastically affect the chances of getting into certain schools. Okay, next, uh, I'm a US citizen, but stud I study abroad. Am I counted in domestic or international student? Um, yeah, so there, uh, there are these different circumstances in which they evaluate uh, students who have different nationalities from where they attend school. So we often get this question for, let's say, an international student on paper because they're on visa is studying at a US high school. So academically, you will be evaluated based on the transcript of that school. But insofar as things like, you know, financial aid, uh, things like, you know, potentially some scholarships, that your country of citizenship is where they evaluate you, right? So let's say you are a US citizen who's studying in China um, because the transcript and all the grades and all the, you know, the factors, they would academically uh, evaluate you in the same pool as an international student. But when you apply for financial aid, the FAFSA, of course, then you would be a domestic student for those purposes. So it's not just, they lump everybody into one category. Okay, uh, let's see, community college credit versus study AP, which is better. I think I've already answered that. So I, I would prefer that you take a community college course with a transcript because it shows that you're actually interested in learning the topic in and of itself. Um, these days, AP tests by themselves are very, very low on the overall ranking or totem pole of priorities for college admissions, right? Uh, that's the reason also why they did away with things like the SAT subject tests, because they don't feel like it adds a ton of value in terms of predicting success in college. Whereas if, you, if you're getting A's in college classes themselves, I think that's going to be more predictive for them in terms of like future success. So I, I would only really recommend studying for uh, self-studying for APs if it's in the context of things that you've already learned. Uh, one example is if you've been taking, let's say, piano or violin for many, many years and you want to take, let's say, the AP music theory test, just because you already know the stuff pretty well, then of course that, that would be valid. But let's say if you're going to self-study for an AP psychology test versus taking an intro to psychology course at a local college, I would much, much prefer, and I think colleges would much prefer that you go ahead and take the actual course because then you're actually engaging with a class, learning from an instructor, and then showing that you actually want to learn the material. Um, taking a self-studied AP test only fuels perceptions of like, you know, Asian students as just being a little too test obsessed, which you also want to sort of like be mindful of, right? So I would highly suggest you take a class at you know, a college level class, be it at a community college or maybe an online UC course, or maybe at like a pre-college if you can, as opposed to taking a, um, what do you call this, just another uh, AP test, right? Mostly AP tests are, are there to contextualize your transcript or your grades, which means if you're getting a five, let's say in an AP exam, even if you struggle a little bit in the class, that kind of helps sort of, you know, um, adjust a little bit in their eyes and, and give you a little bit more context into the grades. Okay, next uh, is to take community college classes that is equal to AP level or to join some not so competitive summer program at the end of 11th grade, which, is, which one is a better choice? Um, I mean, it largely depends. I would say if let's say grades have been an issue in the past, uh, then maybe taking a college class would help boost up the GPA, which, which is still at the end of the day, the single biggest component, as opposed to joining a not so competitive summer program. But if a student has, let's say, straight A's, but they're really lacking in evidence for their major, it might be better to take a, a summer program, even if it's not as competitive per se, to build evidence to show your interest in your major. It's very situational. It largely depends on whatever is in your current transcript and what things you maybe need to like offset or try to kind of balance out. Okay, um, I guess we have one last question here. So is mock trial recommended? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think oftentimes uh, things that have you do public speaking can be extremely helpful, even if let's say a student is primarily interested in STEM. 
even if your activities are very STEM centric, it's always good to have at least one or two non STEM based activities and something that helps you with things like public speaking, because not only will it help you with things like your English or history classes in terms of being a lot more knowledgeable about like things like current affairs, world affairs, it'll just help you organize your thoughts in a much more compelling manner when you're doing things like writing essays. Not to mention, it'll probably make you a lot more comfortable with things like the college interview, right? Because uh, some students, if they've only been doing STEM-based activities, they, they don't really know how to like have polished conversations with people. Uh, so it's definitely something that I think everybody should have in their toolbox, be it mock trial, FBLA, speech and debate, um, for most competitive students, I would recommend probably having at least one of those types of activities to make them a little bit more well-rounded and to help with other aspects in terms of being able to confidently speak to others and just help with general things on the social science and humanities side of things as well. Okay. All right. So yeah, those are some wonderful questions. Um, oh, we'll just take this one last. So Lisa asks, is taking four times of the SAT too many times? It largely depends. Uh, I guess you can always use score choice, right? So you can always hide scores that you don't want them to see. So if you feel like you still need it and you feel like there's still room to improve that score, sure. I mean, go ahead and take it if you think you need to. But obviously, it depends on what stage. It's largely situational. Like if you're already a senior and there are other better things to do and your score is already reasonably high, four might be too much. It really just it depends individually and what your score is and what the rest of your profile looks like. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, yeah.